Recording, recording, is it recording? It is recording. Hello, thank you for clicking. I hope you're doing well. If you don't know me, my name is Dr. Facundo Gonzalez. I'm an emergency physician in New York. So, subscribe if you can see that. So basically this is a two part video of my experience in the COVID ICU. I think it's very worthwhile watching. I put a lot of time into the editing and I am really showing a lot of the things that goes on in the COVID ICU. You'll see real footage, I'll educate you, I'll give examples. I'm showing you me removing my, a midline from a patient. I'm showing you cardiac ultrasound, looking at the IBC in fear of being a cave up for fluid status. There's a section where I'm showing you UV decontamination in the COVID ICU. I'm showing you how I put on my protective equipment. Uh, uh, there's a magic trick. Uh, there's a magic trick in part one, which when you see it, I think it will be obvious, but comment below and tell me what it is. And do enjoy it. I think it's a very good video that I wish I had when I was trying to learn or see what it was like to be an actual resident in an ICU. Okay. All right. This is real deal how it is in the COVID ICU. So hope you enjoy. Adios. Good morning. It's 5.20 a.m. and I'm starting my three 12-hour shifts in the COVID ICU. Uh, so this will be my second video blog. Okay, so enjoy. All right, 5.56, I shower, I had uh, coffee. Hello, kitty, yes. Oh, okay. So, me bañé, tomé café. So I should get started, I should go turn on the car. Kitty, 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 kitty. Harbor Law. Ah, just kidding. Mentira, no Harbor Law. Adios, kitty. I must go. Bye bye. Adios, kitty. Bye. Hello. So, son, it's 6 18 a.m. I just made it to the hospital. I just parked. Uh, so, basically, I'm going to be doing three 12 hour shifts in the COVID ICU. But honestly, it's never 12 hours exactly. I'm actually arriving hopefully by 6.40, 6.30, I'll be in the ICU because the, I have, I'm in charge of five patients and I have to evaluate them, look at their overnight labs events, and I have to write the notes uh, prior to the attending coming in around 8.30. So then we can run for many hours. So, you know, it's usually 13 hours, max 14 hours a day. So I'll be doing that in the COVID ICU, which obviously, yes, the entire unit is a COVID unit. So I have to wear all my protection and yeah. So hope you enjoy this. This is my second video blog. And if you would like to subscribe at this time, please do. And I'll keep you guys up to it throughout the day and any other interesting things that happen in this like next two days, okay? All right, ciao. Yeah. Employees cleaning area for a panda. Hello, panda. So that takes our temperature prior to entering the building. Got my scrubs. Reason why you get scrubs is so you don't take the COVID home. So I get them from a machine which is kind of cool. I have that machine 
video on my other surgical SC 24 hour video. As I said on my prior video, you always have time to eat before running for many hours. If not, you will not eat again for many hours. All right, so we're still rounding. Uh, it's 9.45 a.m. And unfortunately, when I came in, remember I said I had uh, five patients to take care of unfortunately one of them passed overnight and unfortunately that's how it happens you know ICU are for patients are very critically ill and require a lot of interventions and uh, one of them got very sick overnight and passed away so I have four patients now and even these patients are very sick so I'll continue to update you it's 9 45 now we still have a lot of more patients to see and you know they all have COVID, and it's interesting when i came in i realized a lot of these patients are actually on all these different medications that are still under research but however we tried our best to do everything for them and not withhold anything in case it turns out that it is helpful so people are taking their steroids they're taking randesivir they're taking ivermectin uh, baricimibab cimid you know the monoclonal antibodies so pretty much yeah it's tough so so to give you a little update okay and i actually show you in the back what you saw was uh how they transport the patients that are deceased uh so i just wanted to show that it's literally a giant cart with everything black and the patient is there and then they go to the morgue and then depending if they wanted aptosis or no medical examiner evaluation that happens from there but I just hopefully saw that clip back there okay I'll probably put a little picture here showing what I meant okay what you guys are seeing now is me removing all the gauze and tagoderm that was applied to the skin to secure the midline in place so i'm just making sure everything is off before i do any pulling one of the things i like to do myself is get an alcohol wipe and wipe the area around the insertion site in case there's any dirtiness, bacteria, etc. Prior to me pulling the line to ensure more clean procedure. Then I use gauze to apply pressure at the side while I pull. And as you can see, I'm pulling a good amount. It is a long catheter. You can cut it any way you want. This one was, I think, 13 to 14 centimeters. Then... What I'm going to do is ensure the bleeding has stopped and you will see that then I'm going to grab a tagoderm. Tagoderm is a very sticky plastic that I will put over the gauze to keep pressure and keep it in place. Okay, so just finish watching.
I just finished. You can see wearing the mask all day, the N95. And mask, shield. Finally, I get to eat some food. So, and it was busy. I hadn't had a chance to make videos in between. I'll probably end up making a video once I finish some food. <laughs> Very hungry, but it was a good day. Uh, two patients got better. They were downgraded from the ICU. One patient did pass away and then two other patients still in the ICU. I just got home. I think, I don't know, it's 8.25 around there. Uh, it was a busy day, that's why I didn't have a chance to show you a lot, but I'm very glad that I was able to show you that one section where I was removing a midline on one of my patients that was being downgraded to a step-down unit because they don't require ICU level of care. So that was good. And as you saw, you know, it's a difficult rotation. COVID is crazy. It's unexpected. It behaves differently in different people. So as you saw, I came in and it was literally... A uh, patient that had passed walking, going away. Then two patients improved, they got downgraded, as I mentioned, and two of them are still sick and they're still in the ICU. So this is, was day one out of three. I probably did maybe 13 hours. Hope you enjoy this video. Subscribe. Do it, do it.